Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Benny, a true nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where Europe just keeps looking like more and more of a mess. We actually had peace for a remarkably long period of time in Europe, but uh, over the past couple of decades, things have really bloody gone to hell. We've got this madness over here with the Portuguese attacking the English and the Spanish just standing around and watching and the French not sure what they want to bloody do. I've taken Metz, but the Imperials blatantly don't really like the look of it. The English finally might be planning to take Bruges. Over here, we've got war with Poland that the flipping Pope doesn't like. At least we're making some good progress over here. Over here, on the Russian frontier, yeah, we're finally making some good damn progress. In fact, let's just actually move you down here, Bolslaw, my good man. Just slapped out that there watchtower. Lovely. Because very soon, I would say Moscow will belong to us, and that will be beautiful. Because other than that, well, the Russians have got... I don't actually know where the town is. In this region, they'd have, yeah, they've got this region, and they've got this massive region somewhere around here. So, like, there's a town somewhere around here, there's no bloody clue where it is. But hopefully it's a tiny, tiny little castle, so it won't be able to train much, and anything it sends will be very, very insignificant indeed. That would be nice, hopefully, at least. Things are not looking much better in northern Italy, by the way. Yeah, we've got Milan here, who fortunately have managed to throw away most of their strength against the walls of Venice, our allies, and we didn't actually need to intervene on their behalf. So that works nicely, at least. That all works in my favour. I like that. So, uh, at some point, Milan, if they were just stupid enough to throw one more full stack arm against Venice, well... Let's just say Genoa should probably stand ready to make a move on Milan if need be. Knock those bastards out of the game once and for all, because they're too dangerous to be left alive, to be perfectly honest. Still, for this turn at least, we're pretty much out of money, and I think just about everyone's moved around. So, time to see what happens next. This will be a particularly interesting turn, because yeah... There's a couple of particularly interesting moves here. The English force here, where's that going? Is it going to reinforce and try and take out the Portuguese? Are the French planning to move in? Because the English, especially if they're about to fight those Portuguese, they're probably a little bit on the vulnerable side. Like, if the English have to lose a fair bit of their strength dealing with the Portuguese, and then this English force up here is busy with Bruges, potentially this force might actually have a clean run at kicking the English off the continent. Or rather, kicking them off this bit of the continent and leaving them with only Bruges. Assuming they can take it. I really hope they can. I think this town has now been under siege like three, four, probably four times at this point. So hopefully they can pull it off. Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry, I also forgot we were supposed to be speaking to that guy. Well, he's a nice easy takeover. Oh, yes. Loads of lovely easy money out of him. Now, over to the French. They actually move first, which kind of works to their disadvantage. It would be nicer for them if the English move next. Presumably a bunch of agents quietly moving around where I can't see. Now, where are your main armies going? So if you just put all your armies together at this point, you could have a very, very nasty full stack one. Speak of the devil, looks like that's exactly what you were doing there. Marseille is vulnerable. I'm not planning to attack it, but I'd just like to see the fact there's nothing major over there because, yeah, I'm just... Ooh. Okay, sorry, there's a third English army floating around that I wasn't expecting. That's interesting. French fleet floating around, but it's massively outclassed by the English fleet, so they're not going to be able to achieve much, to be perfectly honest. More forces bumming around, joining together. Yeah, you've got a decent force there. They'll be able to defend anything the English throw in this direction, but the English have three decent, if not spectacular armies. Ooh! And the French... I think the French are finally going for... I can't remember what castle that is. I think that's Burn. That might be Burn up there. Uh, so yeah, that's possibly the last rebel settlement in the whole of Europe, in fact, and I think the French are going to get it. They have grown really, really bloody nicely. Over to the Imperials. What are you doing, my French? You've got a huge force there. Backing off from Hungary. Hungary? <laughs> I love Hungary. Like, you know, if there's one faction I'm cheering for that's not me, it's, oh, I wouldn't abandon Venice right now. The flipping forces of Milan probably aren't done yet, Venice. <laughs> You'll probably see them again yet. Right, and yes, would you flipping believe? The flipping forces of Milan, they just want to keep tossing away their strength yet. Dear oh flipping dear. But I tell you what, they could win. They've got enough strength to win if they get lucky, so we've got to be careful of this. And that's one Russian merchant picked up by Milan. That's fine, I'm happy for Milan to be picking off Russian merchants at the time being. One small force of the Russians is looking like it's trying to just get back to Moscow in time to reinforce. The small force I just beat is now retreating into the forest to hide and cry. Beautiful. The Moorish peacekeeping diplomat is coming around trying to sort out, no, you know what, he said give peace a chance, but no one was interested. Turkish merchant coming in, should probably go and pick him off just for the money and- Ooh, hello! That was presumably a small army of mine that might have just gone rogue there. Dear, oh flipping dear. Egyptian diplomat coming in as well, can't really do much. 
My priests are all over the shop, just making sure everything's nice and Catholic. You're there, but to be honest, you probably can't even outdo the fact that I've got a nice little church in this area. So that's not going to do you much good at all. One priest on his own, rather one imam on his own. Not going to do much good. Now, England. Here's the one I want to flipping watch. England, England, England. Yeah, move your diplomats around. But where's your army going? Okay, one small force coming over here. Joins into that one, which is going to significantly reduce the movement points of that army. And you're... What are you planning to do? Oh, here we go. Are you about to attack the Portuguese? I think you are, and got your ass handed to you by the Portuguese. <laughs> this is a very, very weird moment, quite frankly. Right, so force there. More forces coming in. More forces just heading over to Europe from the mainland of England there. But yeah, the English have just been battered by the bloody Portuguese because everything is weird. Still, there's that force now that's a little bit stronger than it was, so maybe next turn they'll actually move over and probably also get beaten by the Portuguese. Who bloody knows? Poland! Now, we've got a standoff with me in Poland. They've got a big army, and so do I, just facing each other outside of Thorn, which is now in my possession. But I can't take anything else without upsetting anybody else in terms of the Pope. So you're just moving your diplomats around. But where are your armies going? Yeah, big force over there. Another force over here, just heading in this direction. One more force heads over to Vilnius to reinforce, and understandably so. That place is a little bit on the vulnerable side, albeit I don't want to take it over with an actual general, because I'm really, really scared of what the Inquisitor might do. But, ooh, okay. More forces heading up towards my territory. Now, if they attack me, I'm pretty sure they're under Pope's orders as well, if I am. So if they attack me at this point, I think they're as good as excommunicated. And that works for me, because if they get excommunicated, then it's open season on all their cities. My army can just go nuts. Now, Hungary. Hungary, my friends. Now, little force going over there, but where's the big one? Where's the big one going to go? Here comes a big general heading south, possibly just clearing out some flipping uh, rebels or something. But that big army sent right to Vienna. I really hope it's... Yes, it's on the move. Go on, take Nuremberg. Do it, do it, do it. And that's a heretic heading down towards Rome. That's just, quite frankly, ballsy. Uh, do you want to spend... Yeah, you know what? As I've actually got 10,000, the economy's recovering nicely at this point. I will accept that and take a Master Thieves Guild at Vikingrad. Beautiful. And yes, indeed, we acquired that bloke's money at the end of last turn. Ah, so all of that's not all my money. Some of that was just left over from last turn when... Where did you go? Did you die of natural causes immediately after that? And... <gasps> Toke! Toke died! He did! His final act was buying out another merchant, and then he died. Oh, Toke. You were our original merchant. Ladies and gentlemen, a minute's silence for Toke. Okay, I got bored after four seconds, but you know, it's the thought that counts. Now, what's also very interesting is the English are standing here, but they have not actually attacked Bruges. Now, that actually is interesting, because if the English are just planning to stand here, I might be able to use them to take Bruges for me. That's interesting. Oh, Cardinal Report, by the way. And, ooh. Okay, the Spanish guy died, but it was actually a Papal States guy. Okay. Let's have a look at the current state of the Cardinal College, because this is important, because... Uh, okay, this is oh, good. Nice. We do have one of our guys lined up to actually be elected as Pope, which is fine, because... Ah, uh, but... So do the Papal States. Annoyingly, they would have voted for me, except they're not going to if they've got their own guy. And Venice as well. Venice are my other allies, and they're not going to vote for me if they've got their own guy in the race. So the two factions that would definitely have voted for me aren't, because they've got their own horses in the race. That's really annoying. But do I have enough votes to swing it? Um, No, I don't think I do. Actually, wait, I probably do, because aside from the Papal States guy... There's, yeah, there's another Papal States guy who will vote for the Papal States guy. So we can rule him out. The two Venetian guys will vote for the Venetian guy. So therefore, I know for a fact, and I've got four guys who are going to vote for my guy. So I've got a total of five votes. The Papal States got two votes, and the Venice guy has three votes. And that leaves, ah, but that leaves Sicily and the Imperial. So if they were all to band behind Venice... Venice could still outvote me. Now, Sicily hates me, but Sicily kind of hates everyone, I think. So I'm not sure who Sicily would vote, because I think Sicily's actually at war or has been excommunicated by literally all those factions. So, hmm, interesting. If there's a papal election tomorrow, I wouldn't necessarily win it. But that's fine, because I think the Pope is... Uh, 
I think right now he's not he's even that old. No, stop moving your guy around. We don't have to worry about that. And go over to the Pope. He's, yeah, he's 49. Unless I actually choose to assassinate him, or, sorry, I mean, unless someone were to assassinate him, definitely not me, then he's unlikely to die of old age anytime soon. Now, once again, we have trouble to deal with over here. Can I be bothered to deal with you? And is there enough here to... I suspect that's enough to actually fight those guys back. Probably. But do I want to send a cavalry contingent over there? What's you even in here? It's, it's a lot of crossbows. It's a lot of crossbows. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to send yes. the cavalry contingent oh, over in yes. this direction just to go and assist as need be. So, sadly, I can't quite get them into Venetian territory this turn. So, this is going to be a little bit controversial because this isn't really an invasion but it is forces sitting in territory that's not mine which is uh that's annoying sadly you're blocking up the bridge which is very very irritating i could just put it on the yeah i'll put it on the papal states territory and then it will be it's still kind of in friendly territory and there'll be paved roads that mean if i can get over either bridge i can get there next turn but i think he might be planning to attack next turn so we'll have to see about that and oh dear the Sicilians are back, but don't worry because the flipping peacekeeping forces from the Moorish Yuan are still here to keep order. Now this young chap down here I sent over to Dongola. Almost certainly he should just start heading back up as soon as possible. Uh, he should probably need to leave a few forces down here. We're not to be able to repair those guys, so... I'll tell you what, just bring back the damaged spear militia lads, bring back the peasant archers, bring back you, and up you pop, please, lovely. And just to prove to people, when I've been complaining about the fact I can't lay down watchtowers, it's not just because you can't lay them on a road. There's something wrong with this territory, because I'm clearly not on a road, but I'm still not allowed to lay them, so... Uh, Weirdly, it's the same bug that's in Rome to the War, but then I suppose Medieval 2 was built on the skeleton of Rome's code, so possibly the same bug that affected, like, the Egypt area in Rome Total War also affects Medieval 2. Who flipping knows, eh? I don't have anything urgent to do with my assassin, so I kind of but notice we've got a Polish diplomat over there, so screw you, you're Polish, you die now. There you are, you just have a nice, nice night, and here we are, we've brought a snake to slide up between your legs, because when we assassinate people, we do it in the most ridiculously elaborate and- Oh, bloody hell! That was 95% likely! How did you mess that up? He's right there! Just get a knife, stab him in the- You messed up a 95% chance. Well bloody done, you idiot. Okay, peasant twerp needs to be upgraded, so that's what we should do. Let's give them, even though it's expensive, the large stone wall over in peasant twerp, get them up to being a large city, because you've got their- Pretty bloody quickly. Ooh, and our house has finished its flipping warehouses. That's flipping nice. Yeah, that's okay. Now we're making good damn money. Lovely. Now, yeah, what we need to do next is... If I could... What's even left here? There's some stuff here, but not much. If you could leave this city... This city's at 95% public order, and you're only three on the chivalry. You could probably afford to leave this city. Now, if you can, step out of the... Okay, fine, the city's a little bit annoyed. If you two and the king were able to make it over to Bruges and the English stayed still and you had enough build points right now to actually put them under siege, or, hang on, by any chance, do I have a... I've got a spy right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's only bloody 50-50. Right, do I want to do that? Um, I don't know. What else have we got? Oh, yeah. Peasant Twerp's really developing nicely. And Helsinki. And oh, yes. Financial up to three. We're close to sweeping it. We're close to flipping sweeping it right now. Up to third in the world in financial. How is Spain? It's calculated in a weird way. <laughs> By any chance? It no. No, still no one's taken Valencia. Zaragoza's French. This area is still bloody hell. Spain just has not got going. Must have lost an early battle against Valencia and just never recovered. Spain's doing so weirdly. Yeah, I don't want to take the risk. I kind of need this spy to keep an eye on what's going on in this part of the world. So what I'm just going to do instead is I'm just going to bring you three around here to Bruges. And I'm going to put Bruges back under siege and 45 build points. I need... Mm, I might need slightly better than that. I could ideally do with... Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to hire someone to help out with all of this. Hired one, yeah, mercenary spearmen. They're nice and cheap. 
Now, with that on board, I should have enough for... Uh, I'd like just five... Okay, fine. I'll spend a bit more money. Why not? Uh, I'd like to just have one more thing as well. Your expense... Everything's expensive, but screw it. Right, I'll have one ram, one ladder. That is fine. And what I want to do is I want the English to just stay exactly where they are because that means next time I can attack and the English will help me out because they'll get pulled into the battle as my friends. Then they can do the fighting for me and life will be good. But yeah, I need to, uh, need to recruit just a handful of extra people to help out with the peasant twerp situation for the moment because peasant twerp is... Uh, actually, no, I should probably just move the... I think things are much under control down here, much more than they used to be. So as Peasant Twerp is literally the only red city here, I'm going to move the capital from Riga over to... Yeah, Thorn. Thorn feels more in the middle anyway. That shouldn't make a difference to the Middle East. So that actually feels like now that's in a good position to be the capital. No, not, not you. Here we go. Move this over to the capital, please. Lovely. Thorn is now the capital, an extremely well-guarded capital. The only... Actually, not the only fortress. There is uh, Magdeburg's... Uh, no, that's a castle. I think the only other fortress is actually down in Gaza, if I recall correctly. But still, it is an extremely well-fortified capital, damn it. And that's got peasant twerp to that. Lovely, and our house might just be... Yep, our house is actually fit to have its taxes put up. Beautiful. Now, how good is that sure. Turkish? Not I very good at all. Good. Play. One of you guys, head over there, finish that bastard off if you'd be so I'm kind. This is just one guy that's just town militia. One unit of town militia. I think we can handle that, yes. Just going to send one unit out there just to chase him off. If we're lucky, we might even get a general out of this. Clear victory. Didn't even lose a single man. I couldn't have done that well. And yes, indeed, we have one. Good. Social drinker, reasonable night fighter, good. Speaks of loyalty, religious winning first. That will do. It's always welcome to have a new bloke. And also, he just... He just picked up a flipping trait. I mean, it's another Sven. No, it's not. Wait. Why did you just pick that up? Why did you pick that up? Okay, fine. Someone just got jealous. This is Ulf. This is Ulf Slyngenbard. There we are. Ulf the Sly. Lovely. So here we are. Here's Ulf the Sly. Who's our new guy? Is everyone here right now? No, Ulf the Sly. You return. No, you cannot. Return back to Gaza. Commence training a new army, please. Because, yeah, we need some more troops floating around here. Because we need to push up and take over a couple more Egyptian settlements. Actually, Egypt doesn't have... Oh, hang on. Something's going on over here. Uh, let's just God send a... Yeah, send a carnal up in this direction. Trying to figure out what's going on. Probably, as the um, the Turks haven't taken over Adani yet, that means probably Antioch's currently under siege by... Oh, no, you've taken this as well. Fine, you've got a little bit more. A little bit more than I thought. So the Egyptians have got um, Aleppo up here, they've got Damascus, they've got Acre, and then they're probably besieging Antioch. Antioch's really, really valuable. Like you see here, you've got, that's what, that's a double sugar and a double cotton. So that's a really, really valuable settlement to just have a bunch of uh, merchants standing around as well. Uh, so is Constantinople with its double glass. And is that glass? I think that's glass. It doesn't look like glass now, it looks like fabrics or textiles or something it's got yeah it's got some dyes i think that's actually textiles and some grain it also grows really fast as well yeah and there's a couple more textures over here like yeah they've got a really good economic heartland in this part have the byzantines still we'll come back to them later no need to cause trouble with them we've caused trouble with literally everyone else. <laughs> as someone said in the comments stop starting wars with people i will I will. I feel like we've got enough wars. Unless, of course, we're about to start a war with Milan. So, actually, contrary to what I just said, we might be about to start just one more little war. Still, hopefully Bruges will fall into our hands. Metz is being upgraded. Very soon that will become a proper little castle, which is nice, rather than just a little Mott and Bailey. We can't really train much there right now, and we can't actually retrain those mercenary spearmen, unfortunately. Nothing we can do there. That's just rebel. Still no sign of movement over here from the Imperial Saint towards Hamburg. Which is good news. That's the last thing I need on my plate right now. Like we've got enough wars on without the flipping Imperials getting involved as well. What I should probably do yes. is... Yeah, I'm actually planning to send this guy down south a little bit. I just want to get a better view as to what's going on in this part of the world. Potentially keep an eye on, yeah, this force. And where are you going exactly? <laughs> Oh, I'd love it if... Actually, no, I wouldn't love it if they attacked the Viennese, because I'd like to bring the Hungarians into this big alliance at some point or other, but I'm uh, not sure if I'm going to make that work. And in fact, very soon at Thorn, we'll have very good news indeed, because 
Heavy Mail is the next upgrade for both the Viking Raiders for their final upgrade and indeed for the Dismounted Huskars. And I use Dismounted Huskars a lot. So Heavy Mail for those guys is very, very good indeed. And uh, very soon we have got ourselves, yep, the armor in production for Heavy Mail. So that's coming in next. Then we can have really, really damn good quality Dismounted Huskars. Even better. And those guys have already been doing the job. So yeah, as soon as we can get those guys retrained at Thorn, that'll be magnificently good news. But... Big deal up here, Bolslaw the Merciless is ready for his attack on Moscow itself. Now, we don't want to attack those guys, because if we attack those guys, they'll retreat inside Moscow. So what we need to do is we need to put it under siege and hope these guys attack me, and then we can fight the battle out on the field. Uh, you, my good man, how you're actually pretty good at your job. Can you get... Yes, you're very likely to be able to get inside here. In you go, and it's going to be the old, see if we can get a Russian soldier... Come on, my good man. That's right. Just call over a soldier into a back alley. And I think that's a good angle. I think this is a good thing. Come on. Yep, there we go. Got him inside the city. Beautiful. Now, now we know exactly what's going on. It is... Actually, it's only a flipping large town. <laughs> Blimey. Uh, yeah, kind of not a huge amount of infrastructure. Actually, they have invested reasonably. There's a town hall. There's a blacksmith church market. It's pretty much as advanced as it can get, and oh yeah, it's actually close to being, in fact, actually, they might be upgrading it right now. I could get in just, just before they upgrade it now. That'd be perfect. Yeah. We need to put this place under siege right now. Right. In we go. Lovely. So we can get in there nice and, oh, Bolslaw the Merciless has actually gone grey extremely quickly. <laughs> this is how it worked in Rome Total War as well. Yeah, they just kind of changed over from their midlife portrait to their old age portrait in like a single turn when they reached a certain age. So uh, that's unfortunate. Right, what we probably want is uh, two rams, two siege towers, and then um, do with maybe maybe if I sacrifice, I'm going to sacrifice one ram for another. No, but I do want to be able to get on the walls a bit. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. One ram, two towers, three ladders. In a single turn. I'm happy with that. Uh, let's just double check those. Nope, there's no mercenaries at all. And in here we do indeed have the factioner and another family member. But up on the walls it's going to be mostly, yeah, basic archer militia who have got basically no defence whatsoever. Spear militia, we can chop our way through them. Yeah, they don't have proper troops here. All we really need to get through is, broadly, the heavy cavalry. And hopefully we've got enough... No, actually, we've got a handful of mercenary spearmen, and we've got ourselves heavy infantry. It'll be enough, but we will take losses. But it will be worth it just to take the Russians' capital off them, leaving them with only one crappy little settlement somewhere over here, God only knows where. Right, time to start planning here. The Council of Nobles actually says they'll give me some stuff if I take Bruges in two turns. Well, I might just be able to do that, and in three turns... The order to stop attacking Poland ends. Now, if I attack Poland, it will immediately restart. But in some ways, uh, that doesn't matter so much. Because I can get in, and potentially if I set this up correctly, in a single turn, before the Pope can issue the order. So he can't issue the order during my turn. I attack Poland, and at the beginning of the following turn, he issues the order. So, like, if I, like, you know, set up my strike so that I can attack multiple Polish settlements in a single turn and take them by bringing along enough things like catapults, etc., then as a result, I can actually help myself to quite a bit of Polish territory before the Pope gets too mad at me, and he can't excommunicate me for it. He can not like me, but he can't excommunicate me. And in terms of where we would like those strikes to be, can't help but notice, Prague is looking very, very rich indeed, with plenty of mines, but barely in defence. Breslau, very little defence, again, looking pretty vulnerable to me. Especially if the Polish are sending all their forces around here, possibly trying to get around the side of Thorn or whatever. We'll have to see about that. Where are you going? You could try... Yeah, you can actually cross that bridge today, which would be a concern, potentially, but... Hmm, we'll have to see. You can't get to Thorn. We'll have to watch you to figure out where you go next. The alternative would be an attack on Vilnius. Problem is Vilnius is... Well, actually, Vilnius is largely guarded by troops who have no business being in a castle whatsoever. There's, sure, there's a family member and some Polish nobles, but other than that, oh, and dismounted Polish nobles who are really good. But, other than that, town militia, flipping peasant archers. Nothing that major, really, 
I would say the forces at Lasagna should be able to handle that pretty easily. I just need some nice big chunky heavy infantry and some spearmen to recruit as well. Yeah, some Viking raiders I think could very easily chunk their way through that. Uh, if I can afford... I can't afford two sets of them unfortunately, so in which case I may as well just buy us. I can only buy one thing, I may as well buy the dismounted Huskarls because then the upkeep cost is a little bit on the lower side. Let's get you in production and consider, in a few turns, be ready for a big assault over here. Now, I believe if I recall correctly, Hamburg has the ability to produce catapults. Lovely. Do I have any catapults floating around at all? No. No, I don't. I need to start training some new troops up around Magdeburg, Stettin, and catapults around Hamburg, and also... Lasagna, can you train? No, you can't. That's more of a concern. Um... Yeah, with no access to catapults, there's no real chance I'm going to be able to take Vilnius. Because I can put it under siege, but the Pope will say, no, 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 stop it. In which case, stop the trading at Lasagna for the time being. Instead, turn our attention over here. Let's begin the invasion of Poland by taking Prague and Breslau off them. It would not be a bad idea to basically steal a couple of towns. Now, arguably that leaves me vulnerable. Because then, suddenly, I've gained a border with the Hungarians who have proven themselves to be extremely unpredictable. There'll be the much better guarded city of the Polish capital right there. But actually, ooh. But the nearest Polish castle would be over here. Actually, I would not be bordering any Polish castle, and I would have Thorn. So I feel like I'd be pretty secure there. I'd actually be okay with that. And yeah, the nearest two new bordering cities would be Nuremberg, which I think the Hungarians are about to take, and Hungary, Hungary holding Vienna, who I would like to make a friend. I think I should really make friends with these guys, because me and them, we could have common enemies, and their war against the Imperials suits me just marvellously. Yeah, that works just fine. So in which case, Hamburg, get some flipping catapults in production, please. Uh, lovely, because this is... How big are these? Ah, that's a stone wall. We'll need at least two catapults to get. Actually, we no, we won't. Positive. We'll need at least two catapults if we want to actually knock down the walls. If we just want to take out the gate and we'll just walk in the front gate, then one catapult per city will be fine. And this is, uh, that's a large town anyway, so we could probably knock down the walls with one catapult there. Right, just need to watch out where the Polish are going. Train some troops here. I think we'll be in good shape to make some gains next turn across the very far east and west of the Northern Empire. And I'll be very looking forward to that, as well as starting to prepare for the next offensive against Poland. But I think they're preparing for their next offensive against us as well, with this little army here. And good news over in Damascus, right now public order is at 70% and it's 24% Catholic. Now as someone points out to me, the reason why Jerusalem recovered a bit of its public order was because I made it too Catholic. You get religious unrest at its maximum by having 50% one religion and 50% the other, then religious unrest becomes really unbearable. Because I made Jerusalem really Catholic, religious unrest therefore settled down a bit. There's a small penalty for being of a religion that's different from the faction leader's religion, if I recall correctly. I think that's how it works. But uh, yeah, Jerusalem, because it was too Catholic, was uh, therefore there wasn't much in the way of religious tension there. So basically what I actually want to do is I want to get Damascus up to 50% Catholic and then leave it be or rather keep it at that level. That will be optimal for causing trouble. Oh and King Charles the Crusade has also gone over to his old man portrait. He's gone grey haired as well. Oh all our old favourites are getting old. Old, old, old and that means well Steve Stenger still with his luscious brown locks. It's time for you to start thinking about potentially one day becoming king, my good man. Steve Stenger, the man who would become a king. Wait, did I forget to actually take the flipping general? Yeah, okay, fine. I think earlier in this part I was saying, oh, look, this army can't build a watchtower. Oh, uh, yeah, it's because there wasn't a general there. You can calm down in the comments now. You see, I still can't build it even when he is actually there. So that point was still true if incompetently made. Right, time to see what happens next, because this is important. If Milan takes Venice, that's a disaster, but if they don't, I need to make a difficult decision. Then there's the Bruges question, and Moscow as well. Plus, where are the Polish going? <laughs> a lot of big questions. Oh, and what are the British going to do? Please don't move. Okay, you can move this army to deal with the Portuguese. Please keep this army here. Please, please, please. French just bringing some troops out of their cities. The massive armies... Ooh, where's the big army going? That's a concern. Please not Mets. Please don't be attacking Mets. That would be annoying if you were. 
More small forces moving around, but no real clear sign of an invasion. Yep. France playing pretty conservatively. Imperials should be pretty quiet as well. We haven't really seen much in the way of action from them recently. They seem uh, pretty content to just bum around not doing that much. They're pretty boxed in now. They don't have anywhere to uh, expand towards. They kind of missed their chance to expand, to be perfectly honest. They kind of brought this on themselves. I wouldn't be surprised to see a significant force moving down towards the Hungarians. I assume they're still at war. I don't remember ever seeing peace between them. So I think they've just been in a state of war for a very, very long time. So... Uh, They've abandoned the bridge, which is useful. That means I can get... No! Do... They've gone straight up over to the bridge, haven't they, bastards? Now, the Venetians. Are you planning to sally forth? Possibly. Oh, no. There's any diplomats. Didn't manage to get a peace, though. Oh, they're getting nervous. And the Sicilians back off because they can't get past the Moorish peacekeeping forces. <laughs> I love the Moorish peacekeeping forces. They're my favourite thing. Right. Byzantine's still bumming around, just got princesses moving around too. But next up is Russia. That's where things get interesting. I don't really think the Byzantines affect us that badly. Russians. Small force... Ah, the force that was carrying in the forest is on its way back. No movement though. Okay. So in which case, probably the assault is just on next turn. The Moors. Uh, yep, there's the peacekeeping forces. Just yelling, give peace a chance. Making everyone just join hands together. Stands in a circle, sing Kumbaya. Ah, that was the Egyptians just beaten back from Antioch. Good, they have not taken Antioch. That saves me dealing with it later. Better and flipping better. They've got, yeah, they're really stressed right now. I'm not seeing much in the way of any good quality troops whatsoever. Ah, the English. Now, this is a very, very important one. What are the English planning to do now? Are you planning to just keep throwing away your strength against the Portuguese? Uh, we've got, oh, we've got more English arriving. We've got more help. Oh, 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 no. The English army just went... Wait, does a rebel army get pulled in as reinforcements into a... Ooh, this is interesting. Can rebel armies reinforce each other? Because if so, we might be about to find that out. Because <laughs> that's... Oh no, England, why couldn't you keep control of your own troops? Darn it. Right, okay. That's going to be interesting. I've literally no idea whether two rebel armies stand next to each other, or rather, a rebel city with a rebel army right next to each other, whether they actually can reinforce each other or not. I've no bloody clue. Oh, Polish are backing off, regrouping with the main force there. Uh-oh. There's a force heading north, and Riga is extremely vulnerable. Hasn't attacked us, though. Okay. That's fine. We're just blocking up the bridge. That's okay. Another force heading also towards Thorn. But I'm worried about how vulnerable Riga might be right now if they decide to march north at us. Hungary. Moving. Oh, there's more movement. There's more movement. Yes. That's right. Everyone towards. Come on, please. Please. Please invade. Please invade. No. Boo. Come on. Keep invading. Even more invading. Oh, yeah. They're actually. Oh, they are. They are. They're going for it. They're going for Nuremberg. Get the spies after them. <laughs> Oh, yes, 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 yes. Take Nuremberg. Go ahead. Do it, you magnificent Hungarian bastards. The rebels, what are they planning to do? Please move the army. Please, yes, the army's moving away. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> possibly that... Oh, someone just died, by the way. Uh, possibly, yes, the computer was as confused as me as to whether it was supposed to reinforce the city if anything happened. So, now this is happening. Now, on the plus side, we do still have a new English... Including catapults. The English have just brought up catapults. This is all very weird, but all right, whatever. Yeah, I'm getting a diplomat right down to the Hungarians. I want to go and have a chat with those magnificent bastards. Uh, and for the time being, what I also need is I want my spy to move around to here and start keeping an eye on what's going on in this part of the world. If you can, just get a bit more... Yeah, that'll do. That's good. So now we've got eyes on. Ah, they've got a big defensive army too. Not sure how these armies stack up. I mean, I can see catapults and town militia, which isn't promising. Whereas over here, I see armoured sergeants, which is much more promising. So I feel like that's the better quality army. Because the banner doesn't really give you strength. It just gives uh, numbers, if you like. Like, if the banner's half full, it means it might be a full stack army, but with loads of damage units in it. But an army that's, like, full of peasants, I believe, still counts as a full banner so we'll have to see about this because i'm not sure i like these guys actually i should have a why can i not see oh that's because that's a hungarian spy not mine it's wearing similar colors just yeah a little bit on the lighter side right we need to get a bit close to figure out what's going on here because uh, if this draws attention 
of the Imperials, then that might just work for me. Anything that draws the intention off me and stops them potentially attacking Mets works for me. And indeed, we do now have a wooden castle. How beautiful is that? Let's actually just build some dirt roads, damn it. And let's just quickly check in on the Middle East round here. I've got Medanus Merchant here, who's very, very good quality indeed. Ready you, pick off this guy, so, please. And that'll be worth... There we are, a nice like easy you. thousand there. As lovely. You actually, thousands don't be that much, but it'll business. do. Oh, you get an extra rank yes. for that, though, which is I lovely. Should. I'll tell you what, my good man, we could do with more people up north. Why don't you head over here and start trading this here sugar... For 375, and also picking off any other merchants that happen to be in the area. Damascus immediately goes over to 35% Catholic, and public order goes up to 105, because Lord only knows how flipping public order works when the computer's involved. I swear the computer's cheating. I can't prove it, but I think computer's cheating. Alexandra's, Alexandra's been building... Ah, you've been building warehouses for ages. Right. Good old... That's not Steve Stenger. That's a guy with an evil moustache. Fine, apparently I just trained an extra merchant here at some point. I just forgot. And here we go. Right. The dilemma is real once again. We have the cavalry standing by, ready to move in, enter Milan territory, cross the bridge, and then follow the paved roads round to Milan right here. Now, the reason I've always been scared of doing this is because... Yeah, I've always been scared of doing this because of the risk that the forces of Milan had too much up here that could immediately sweep south. But, at this exact moment in time, actually, it's not so flipping bad. I've got myself, if not exactly a huge amount of troops, I've got plenty of crossbowmen to man the walls. I've got Crusader Sergeants here. I've got a great cross too left over from the campaign. Yeah, you're not the only one who gets a great cross, or rather that's technically a standard rather than a cross, but same basic principle applies. And we've got plenty of troops hiding over here on Corsica as well. I think it's time. I think it's time for me and Venice together to start the counter-attack against Milan. But first, before we do that, I'd like to see what's going on up here, because I want to see what the bloody hell the situation is with Bruges, because Bruges is looking really, really weak right now, and we've got the English, who should come in and help us with... I've no idea what this is. I know there's two catapults, just don't know what else it is. Sven of Milton Keynes, just take this place over, and... Okay, so the English have shown up with... Well, they've got armoured swordsmen. <laughs> Basically, they've brought a huge amount of siege equipment and some really, really elite armoured swordsmen to battle. And these guys are really elite. Defence, 22. Attack, 14. Good morale, good stamina, combat bonuses and woods and snow. These guys are really, really damn elite. They'll do really nicely. I, meanwhile, have brought with me just some basic spearmen. Some better quality mercenary spearmen and uh, mercenary crossbowmen together with my bodyguard. Now, what's actually bloody left at this point? What's left is... Uh, not insignificant, not insignificant, but if we can just get inside the walls, and with those catapults we can, the English swordsmen might be able to win that fight on their own. I think... Hmm... Tricky one to call, but I'd say we might finally be able to take Bruges with the English help here. Let's give it a go, damn it. Yes, indeed, the English have indeed shown up, and they have been given... Well, they haven't been given any siege equipment. They don't need siege equipment. They've got bloody all the catapults in the world. So, these guys, basically, should just pretty much be able to walk into this city and chop down anything in front of them. Me over here, meanwhile, I think we should probably just hang back and pretty much let the English do the work. So, uh, yeah, I've got one ram and one ladder. So that's a little bit on the concerning side. Uh, where's a good convenient wall? There's a nice out of the way wall. I might just put you guys over there ready to go up there. And you guys ready to go up here. But for the most part we will not be advancing. At all. I'm just going to start the battle. And what's actually here? What is actually here? Okay they knew I was thinking about this wall of course. Because the air is actually pretty good at laying itself out. But with them up there that means it should be... Broadly, I don't think... Yeah, there's the crossbow, but they're not in range either. I think that means there's basically nothing over there with the English. Now, if there's nothing over there with the English, aside from just some metal... Ooh, but Meld Knight is the one thing. Yeah, but Meld Knight's not so good. Uh, though Meld Knight's are... Guys, are you planning to... Guys, no. Guys, no. Guys. Please tell me you're not actually planning to... Okay, good. You're actually planning to actually pelt the walls. I thought they were literally about to start going around the outside of the city to join up with me. 
Fortunately, not. And it's a real shame the actual guys aren't on the walls. Because if they were up on these walls, then the English would absolutely basically destroy the walls. And some of them would fall to their deaths. Which would be hilarious. Because this much firepower, these walls will go down very, very quickly indeed. Yeah, they've already started collapsing, in fact. In fact, the walls have already gone down. And weirdly, the frame rate doesn't like it very much. Possibly there's too much pelting going on. Right, now. Question is, what are the English going to do? Mailed knight without any charge bonus... It is entirely possible that, yeah, these armoured swords... Actually, they should just be able to go in there and just chop their way through them. But if they do chop their way through them, they will take casualties doing it. Meanwhile, what's on that? Nothing's on the plaza. Literally nothing is on the plaza right now. So, uh, what else is going on? Yeah, everything else is just on the walls with us or ready for us. Or weirdly, just a little bit over here, whatever reason... I'd say we just let the English do whatever the English want to do, because the English will probably, by knocking down a couple of walls and a couple of gates, draw their attention over towards the armoured sergeants. Because eventually, oh dear, blimey, they've done some damage to this house over here as well. Eventually, yeah, you're just... I think there might be intention at this point. Oh no, good. I think they're trying to take out the towers, which is perfectly clever. But yeah, they're kind of destroying the city. Excuse me, would you please stop destroying the city? Um, I kind of want to own this place after we're done, actually. So, uh, yeah, they're just taking out the towers to make sure the armoured sergeants don't take any more knocks, which is very, very clever indeed. But eventually, the armoured swordsmen will make it to the plaza. And when they do, the forces on the wall will have to back off the walls, because they'd rather back off the walls than risk losing the entire city. Though, speaking of which, this might be a really, really good time for me to just try and bat down the door, because for whatever reason, everyone decided to be over here. So if they want to reposition, it's going to take them some time to do. So let's just start bringing in the ram and batter this gate down while I've got an opportunity to do so. Now, while we're doing that, over to the English. See what they're getting on with, because the swordsmen will not advance until the English are satisfied. It's safe for them to do so. And it will only be safe for them to do so once they're done taking out the towers. Towers will take a surprisingly large amount of battering, if only because it's quite hard to hit them because they're not big targets. And one of my units is weirdly actually firing right now. That's... Okay, they're just kind of vaguely firing at the walls. Lovely. These guys are fine the time being and yeah it's just kind of a loose couple of shots looks like the uh, the rebels are moving around some flemish pikemen probably they're looking to activate the towers but by the time they get over to these towers hopefully the round will already be in position so as a result yeah everything should be fine over on the english side one tower is down another tower is still up i imagine they want that it looks like these guys are now coming under fire yeah they're coming to fire from this side but it's only a single tower the accuracy is not certain. Looks like it's actually stopped. If it actually has stopped. These guys have... Ah! These guys were not coming around here to get these towers on. These guys were coming down to basically, presumably, form up their nice little spear wall. About here-ish. Makes sense. Sure. But actually, that works really nicely for me. Because if basically we crack open this door and they drop here, I could just bring my mercenary crossbowmen to, like, here-ish and just basically shoot them through the gates. That would work just fine. Good. So we've got the ram up to the gate here. Yeah, that that gate's pretty, pretty much as good as down at this point. Now, how are the English doing? They're just, they're just taking out every tower in the world one by one. There's another one down. Lovely. This gate won't stand up to much, to be perfectly honest. No, it's already two-thirds down. In fact, as I suspected, it would appear that, yeah, the Flemish pikemen are moving around to try and basically block up this here front door. That's okay. One more swing. Gates are open. Beautiful. So, we've now got an entry point under all circumstances. Works for me. So, eventually, at some point, someone's going to come around here and start... Yes, indeed. Flemish pikemen coming down off the walls. Looks like they might plan to abandon the walls entirely. And if they are planning to abandon the walls entirely, that's nice. Yep, these guys are forming up there. Not quite phalanx. They're sort of fake phalanx. But you know what? It still does a pretty good job. Guys, are. Uh, time for you to get out of here just for the time being they can't close this gate again now so you just start running please lovely now back over here at some point the armored oh oh there's movement there's movement going on over here the armored swordsman decided this is the moment to move in these guys are the ones to watch because <laughs> quite frankly these guys can take on anything anything in this city one-on-one -on -one, and they will win handily i suspect however the english are actually out of ammunition for their catapult but it's fine because yeah only 8% damage in the end. <laughs> These things are not the most accurate things in the world. Possibly they're about to start following up. No. Oh, no. They're still technically firing their missiles. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still you are. You haven't actually run out of ammo yet. But you've decided to basically send in the guys anyway. Lovely. Up to 32. And in come the swordsmen. Yeah. These are the guys to watch. Right flipping here. Because these guys will tear everything apart now. 
Who are you going for? And who do you want to take out? Because I'd like you to take this city for me, please. And looks like they're looping around the outside, possibly to get onto this street here. The cavalry is idle for the time being. It'll be interesting to see who reacts to this when and how. Over here we've got ourselves... No obvious sign of trouble immediately. Who said they want to be where? Hmm. Okay, these guys are backing off. There's also... Okay, guys, you don't need to be by the ram anymore, I promise. Also, this city still carries the marks of previous assaults that failed. Because indeed, uh, rebels can't actually repair their own cities. So this damaged wall from a previous assault remains damaged. In they come. In come the armoured swordsmen. This is probably going to be the most difficult fight in the entire thing. For them, at least. For them, at least, it is. Uh, now, if these guys refuse to charge, they probably can't get a proper charge anyway. They're ready. And they're eager. But no, they'll never be able to get a proper charge now. Unless they're extremely bloody level. Technically, they've got their lances down. But these guys have got up to the back of them. And they will just start chopping these Meld Knights apart. Now, obviously, the Meld Knights will do damage in return. But the strength of cavalry is in the charge. And these guys have not got a charge in. And they are taking on infantry on the ground. They are outnumbered. They're already down from... Yeah, remember, these guys got a charge in, sure. But the charge bonus for these guys is only, like, three. And these guys are already down from... Uh, what was it? 68, I think, down to 54 and dropping fast, damn it. They're just going to start collapsing very, very quickly indeed. I think the rebels have figured out where the trouble is because they are sending in... They're sending in crossbowmen. Wow, okay, they've basically just abandoned this whole area. Now, if they've abandoned this whole area, that works for me. Time for me to start bringing my troops in. Everyone start moving forward, please. Because I can help out. Because, sure, I'd like the English to do all the work. But, if there's any risk the English are in trouble, I would like to bag them up as far as possible. Keep an eye on the English numbers. Down to 102. Okay, they're still fine for the time being. The problem is more going to be exhaustion and morale than anything else. They're okay for the time being. They're eager, but they're winded. And they will just be worn down over time. The cavalry are down to 36. They're going down nice and quickly. These guys are pinned to the back. These guys just hanging out on here. Armoured sergeants, 125. That is not to be sniffed at. Neither are the Flemish pikemen who are still bracing. And there's more Flemish pikemen over there as well. Yep, time for us to get into the damn city. We can just set ourselves up here and start firing along this lovely long street. This is a lovely position for me to have a firing line. My mercenary crossmen are going to do some beautiful, beautiful work here. So we should be in good shape. Fire it well off and skirmish mode off, please. Now, back over to the English while we're moving forward. The walls are fine for the time being, and yes indeed, the crossbowmen are going forward. They're not nothing, by the way. Crossbowmen, interestingly, like proper crossbowmen, which these guys are not militia crossbowmen, do have like defense, I think like 8 or 10 or something, and they do have proper swords. They've got a melee attack of like 8 or something as well. They will hold their own. They're going to lose badly against English swordsmen, but the English swordsmen will just slowly, slowly, slowly be worn down. 89, and they will stand and fight. They've got good morale, good stamina. They'll keep up for the time being, but the horses are looking very, very thin on the ground at this exact moment in time. So I just love this. We're going to get this city. It's going to be England that did all of the flipping work. Yeah, these guys are now just standing over here. The swordsman versus the actual pikeman. That's an interesting one right there. You guys can probably put down the bloody siege equipment at this point. And instead, uh, just start moving up to here. If you'd be so kind. Nothing's coming in this direction, is it? No. So you guys, uh, draw yourselves up over here. You guys, draw yourselves up over here. And if you can, potentially... You might actually be able to stand up on the walls and hit those guys from the walls. If you can, that'd be just flipping lovely. Right, in we go. Let's also just get ourselves a nice general in there, just to make sure we've got cavalry to flank if need be. Those guys are standing around, there's no immediate response. Go back over to the English. 78 fighting hard. The cavalry is pretty much dead at this point, and the crossbowmen are going to be going down too. Their other forces are... Not really going to do anything. Understandably, these guys are just going to wait outside the city and not get involved in the slightest. They've successfully created one hole, destroyed some towers, and pretty much burnt down a third of Bruges. So they consider their job done, damn it. Right. Forward we go over to here. Crossbowmen vaguely thinking of getting involved, but weren't entirely sure. Crossbowmen are over here. You know what? We can do it. I'm going to get my crossbowmen up onto the walls. 
right now. You guys up onto the walls. Uh, we haven't got much in the way of a response by the looks of things. I'm going to pull these guys back to here. And the reason is, if these guys push forward, I want the fight to be happening about here, so my cavalry can slam into the side of them. And ready for that, I'm going to reposition you guys. Next to the other two guys, the spear militia, you guys come in here ready to back up if need be. There you are. That works just fine for me, getting that city as well. Lovely. And from up top of the walls, the oh, the wide. enemy general has been killed. That should be the male guy's pretty much done. He's normally the toughest member of them. So you guys are now just heading up top, lovely. Uh, from up top, you should have a... Yep, they've actually got a line of those Flemish pikemen. Perfect. Absolutely. Oh, not quite, though. Not flipping quite, unfortunately. They've got, like, some shots at some of them. Okay, guys, are we up top yet? You know what, guys? Just fire at will. Fire at... Oh, gosh darn it. You... Oh, oh, oh. I think you're about to. Yeah, I think you're about to. Crossbowmen are about to be shot. Damn it. Lovely. So... Oh, uh, crossbowmen versus my crossbow militia. Except my crossbow militia are up on the walls and long range and armor piercing and generally superior in every single flipping way. In comes the fire. And I think they've realized their mistake, lads. Right, good. So they're reloading, but they'll be torn apart in two or three volleys. Uh, now, there's also more crossbowmen coming. But more interestingly, yep. And at this point, the armored swordsmen, who are very tired, are not pushing forward. Interesting. This, oh, no. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Good. 64 of them. And they're now moving towards 124 Flemish pikemen. Now, spearmen, but spearmen with the advantage of their spear wall thing, which gives them an advantage versus cavalry. But genuinely, I'm not sure how this one's going to go. Now, the fact that this just happened on a corner and those guys weren't properly prepared and braced, I think works really in the advantage of the English. Because these guys, their base stats are not very impressive. Attack of 10, defense of 8. That defense of 8 in particular versus the actual uh, defense of 22 of the English works really, really, really in the favor of the English. And they're not in a proper line right now. They're kind of like, you saw this in Rome to the War. The Phalanx kind of mess up quite a bit. So as a result, they're now kind of vaguely facing the wrong way. The English are at the side of them. They're dropping pretty bloody quickly, all things considered, which works for me. Now, my guys are basically tearing these guys apart, which is beautiful. What's left? Armoured sergeants, handful of Flemish pikemen, nothing major. Oh, but the English leader has been killed, which is very, very tragic indeed. So they have both ended up slaughtered, tragically. But that's not enough to make them... Oh, no, maybe it is. No, they've just wavered and broken. Oh, dear, you English cowards. What was that about good morale? Damn it, dear, oh, flipping dear. In all fairness, it was mainly about the exhaustion. It was more about the stamina than anything else. Now... What we do have that's interesting here is, at this point, what's left? Because we've still got pretty much our entire army at this point, and those guys are now running after the English, I think. Uh, the English might well regroup yet. They might well regroup and come back. I would be surprised if they didn't, in fact. So, we'll probably see more of those guys yet. I need to move up, however. I don't need to be wasting more bolts on those little guys. What I need to do instead is... Uh, Start moving up. Start moving up my guys here. Start moving up my guys here. These guys need to come forward. Because I need to start actually shooting down this street. Straight at the actual main guys there. Oh. Or not. Or not. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Are they coming for me? I need to be absolutely sure those are... No, they're not coming for me. Not yet anyway. Fine. Yeah, down you come. Down you flipping come. All right, now. You lads... If you can, finish off these guys. If you can get on top of them, please. In fact, they'll probably break. The moment I charge them, they'll break immediately just because they're wavering. Yeah, that's fine. So that's one. Both wavering and both broken. Good. Back off for the time being. Let's just keep them dancing backwards and forwards. Now I just need to use my crossbow militia on these guys. The English will keep coming and having a go, but I imagine they'll break very, very quickly. They'll be useful for getting the odd kill, but at this point, the kill actually needs to be done by me. Which is a problem, because the bloody armoured sergeants of Flemish Pikemen are still alive. I was kind of hoping the English would do a little bit more than this, to be perfectly honest. So, we'll have to see about that. Are you even gonna... No. They're not gonna get involved in the slightest. Right, let's just get these guys breaking one more time while I bring my actual crossbowmen up there. Crossbowmen draw up about here. And speed it up, please. They're already breaking. Now, you need to draw up behind those guys defensively. Now, where it's a defensive line, that's good enough. Let's do a little bit better there. There we are, that's better. Now, you guys, get behind these guys. These guys should not be firing, not just yet. Now, they're in position, but in a moment, it's 
it's time for the firing to begin. You guys take these lads out. They're nicely, closely bunched together. A nice little traditional phalanx thing. Should work very, very nicely indeed. You guys need to hurry the hell up because you're literally running through. People who are about to start firing really, really dangerous bolts. Damn it. Right. In we go, you guys. Actually, you probably don't have a good line right now, do you? No, I'm going to move you a little bit further forward, actually. I suspect right now you do not have a good flipping line. So forward you go, and... There we go. That's the one. That's the better line right there. If need be, you can back off. So, those guys are probably going to fire a little bit, but they're barely going to do anything to me. So, at this point, this is where things get interesting. And hopefully the English will get involved at some point. Yeah, in comes the odd shot. That's fine. But I can fire a lot more fire back than they can fire at me. And they start marching immediately. The problem with these guys is they don't have the defense. They're a bloody nightmare to take out with flipping. And you're going to start shooting your own guys in the back. And you don't know whether to march or not. And that means you're going to get shot in the back as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't like being shot in the back, do you? Oh, yes. These guys are collapsing nice and quickly here. Where are the bloody... Where are the bloody English? The bloody English are still breaking over there. Okay, you guys just stop. Have a breather. Get your breath and your stamina back. It'll be fine. Now, is anyone going to actually... No, I don't think anyone's even actually moving up the hill to try and kind of counteract us. And that works for me because... Okay, armoured sergeants. Now, uh, is anyone going to try and move at me? No. And if they don't dare advance, we can just basically keep shooting them in a mass. Friendly fire is a thing. Just because you're shooting at one unit, if your arrows hit the other, then you do more damage. Like, big clustered units... Archers are way more efficient and crossbowmen just the same. So, this is all working as far as I'm concerned. Right. Now, at this point, because that's happening, I'd say it's time for us to start thinking about some flanking maneuvers. You guys, time to start getting yourself round here, please. Thank you. And then just actually get you round here. And yeah, as soon as you go round here, then just head round to here. Lovely. Nice. So you guys, head in that direction, please. Head round to the side of the city. Just a couple of shift commands to make sure you actually go the right route this bloody time. These guys are technically eager. Technically eager. I'm going to actually enable skirmish mode to make sure these guys do not actually manage to get in touch with us. And if you're backing off, I'm wondering whether these guys will actually... Hmm. Interestingly, now they've kind of stopped. Well, if they actually don't want to advance, I'm happy to just shoot them in the face at point blank range. Yeah, do it. All right, there we go. Um, are you absolutely sure that you just want to stand right there and not advance? Like, I know, like, defensive lines are kind of your thing, but, like, there's people who have ranged things, and you don't have ranged things, and they're, yeah, they're shooting you. They're shooting you with the ranged things, and now they're running away because this apparently was a surprise to them. Marvellous. In fact, actually, they've started routing immediately. Spot flipping on. Right, time to be careful here because, yeah, the Flemish Pikemen have actually been torn apart pretty quickly. At this point, the biggest threat is the Armoured Sergeants. So I'm going to turn all my fire onto them. Now, some of their strength comes from shields and defence skill rather than just 100% uh, from their actual armour. So the armour piercing won't do that much good work here. But you know what? These are powerful units. It'll do the flipping job. So apparently we've... We captured a gateway. Well, that's nice to know. Yeah, armoured sergeants drop in pretty quickly here. Basically, now we just want to use up all our bolts on the armoured sergeants. And the English are... Yeah, they're running. They're not coming back anymore. They're just done for the day. Fine. Well, you know what? They helped. They took out all the cavalry in a ridiculously, ridiculously just drawn-out slugging match that just left a massive pile of corpses. So, I thank them for their assistance, damn it. So, let's just speed things up a little bit here while my crossbowmen just do the good work. Lovely. And they've actually just gained some flipping experience for all of that. And they've moved into a defensive position around here. So, let's just finish off the last of my bolts against a couple of the Flemish pikemen here if we can. But honestly, it feels like we're pretty much done. Let's just move these guys a little bit further up, quite frankly. And one round for you. That's probably the last round, in fact. Yep. Uh, no, there might be a little bit more yet. One more round for you as well, please. And one more round. Lovely. I think you're done. Time for you to get out of there, my good man. Right, now. At this point, we just begin encircling. Because we have still got these mercenary spearmen. Let's bring them up. And of course, because I moved them around there specially, we've got my spear militia around the side. So we can indeed encircle. If only the English were still here, eh? But at this point, I think we just need to go in and finish them off. There's still 51 armoured sergeants who will put up a damn good fight. But we do have the advantage of numbers quite significantly at this point. So I think we'll be fine. 
You guys just need to basically head over to this here crossbowman. These guys just basically need to start getting around the back of you. You around the back of there. You over to here. And then broadly, we should be able to take everything out. Let's just take out the crossbowman before he causes any more trouble. There we are. That flipping charge bonus should do the job. Now, back off, please. And charge at something else in a second. These guys have got their prepared spears. So we don't want to hit them from this direction. Instead, what we want to do is... Uh, get round the side of them and this unit will actually do very nicely indeed into the side of you please in your flipping pop that will take care of you right you guys if you can squeeze around the back of here and you guys get over here and hit these guys at this point now sure these guys are not exactly great fighters but they're numerous they'll do the flipping job okay you guys just keep squeezing around the back, please. Squeezing around the back, squeezing around the back, squeezing around the back, squeezing around the back. Squeeze around the back. That's... You know what? That's fine. And then you guys come in here. Probably speed things up if you'd be so kind. At this point, the Flemish Pipemen are complete disarray. The Phalanx thing, or the fake Phalanx, has totally collapsed. In comes the charge. The mercenaries want blood, damn it. And they're gonna get it yet. Armoured Sergeants are... They're not in the skill drum. So instead, you guys, I think you've pretty much taken care of you. You guys, move over here for a second. And then I want you into the flank of the armoured sergeants, please. Um, I did. I'd like you to come from like this sort of an angle. But whatever, you know what it'll flipping do. You kind of hit him in the flank. It's close to flipping enough. What was the name of the English hero who gave his name for us? Captain Augustine. Good name. And at this point, despite the fact they're almost certainly the best troops on the field in terms of quality, the armoured sergeants are indeed being worn down pretty bloody quickly now. I'm just going to bring one of the units a little bit into a more dangerous position, just kind of bringing them around here, because I'll just pull them around to the side. There we are. Now I've got a bunch of people around the other side as well. And once these guys are surrounded, they're a much less effective fighting force. Beautiful. And then the last few rebels go down. It has taken literally centuries since the first person attempted to do it but Bruges shall no longer be free if you live in Bruges let me know in the comments because you deserve a round of applause damn it because your city basically is one of the last rebel strongholds in the entire flipping world it didn't have castle walls all it had was strong, brave, Brugian men who stood and fought for their freedom and held out for 200 bloody years. So there is no shame in this defeat whatsoever. Well done, Bruges. Well flipping done. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. You're not wrong, Mr. Narrator Man, but the real heroes here are the Brugians. They're the greatest heroes of all. And finally, Bruges Force! Blimey, how big is this city by now? It's population to be gained. Uh, yeah, if we mask the population. So it's a large town right now, but the population looks like it was probably capped at... It's 2,300. It's probably not more than 2,600 odds. So, okay, we won't gain much from actually kind of, you know, sacking it. So in which case, yeah, you know what? We're just occupying it. Bruges finally, finally belongs to us. Oh, bloody hell. It took bloody long enough. Right, repair the wall. Sure, why the hell not, eh? Now, what I also need to do is... Uh, I can use this place to get some better... Okay, gain some better... There we go. Gain some better visibility of, say, London. Spot on. Right, into Bruges you go. And finally, Peasant's Twerp is not actually bordering a rebel province anymore. And we have a border with the English. And in fact, actually... Yeah, the council promised me something. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, the council have for once actually given me something bloody useful. We have got some really hardcore knights over at Thorn. Now, if the war with the flipping Polish gets nasty again, and it will get nasty again, those guys could be very, very bloody useful indeed. And also over at Hamburg. Ah, the catapults are ready. Well done, Hamburg. I think we'll be needing those sooner rather than later. Oh, but Sven of Milton Keynes is now up to winning first. Dear, oh dear. Still, on the plus side, he's now a better commander, so that's nice as well. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Battle of the Bruges is complete. Oh, finally. Bless you. I think we possibly need to, like, you know, I feel like Bruges should have a name. I don't know what I want to rename it yet, but I feel like Bruges deserves some form of special honorific for how long it held out. These guys are 
are truly, truly valiant, magnificent bastards, and we should honour them with them. I'll have a think about that. I will have a think about that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for what we should call the heroes of Bruges, because, yeah, I think we should definitely call those guys something special indeed. But next time, ladies and gentlemen, oh, we've got a really difficult decision to make, which is, uh, do we dare risk war with Milan? Milan who? Have Milan even been excommunicated? I really hope they have right now. They've, uh, yes, they're excommunicated. So there's no penalties from the Pope for taking them on, but if we do, we better be pretty damn sure we're going to win. Because if we don't, they're coming for us next, and they've got a really big, nasty army. Beyond that, we've also got to strike at the Russian capital itself. Bolslaw the Merciless will be living up to his name. But in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.